Hey there, I'm JDC Art, and at the time of this recording, I have roughly 200 subs on YouTube and roughly 3k on TikTok. I make art videos weekly on this channel, primarily aimed at like a manga or anime niche. You may be asking yourself, why am I telling you this? Well, I was in my YouTube creator studio and I noticed something, the one year anniversary of my channel. Ignoring the fact that I took a six month break from uploading my channel due to personal reasons, my channel is not where I wanted it to be after a year. Something's gotta change, and I think I know what needs to be done. 200 subs on YouTube is a slightly misleading number. Most of my subs come from YouTube Shorts, and for those of you who don't know, YouTube stole an idea of 15 to 60 second content from TikTok does not, you know, mix well with the regular algorithm. So much so that YouTube goes as far as trying to keep the two audiences separate unless someone clicks over from Shorts and, you know, watches some of your long form content. This means, well, I do have technically 200 subs, the majority of these people aren't here for my long form content. And the barrier to get them over to the long form content, uh, let's say it's... It's not the easiest. The real problem this creates is the problem of inaccurate data. I'm not gonna bore you with all the, the YouTube, you know, bullshit like click rate, watch time, and returning viewers. Just know, right now, things aren't looking too great on this channel. A really extreme example I see is with these, like, shorts YouTubers. They could have, like, I don't know, let's say 200k subs, and, you know, their long-form content gets 18k. You know, that's not a number to scoff at. That's not a number to say, oh, they're doing terribly. But what it does mean is that shorts really should be their own channel. I started 2022 with roughly 40 subscribers. And since then, shorts has really been my only growth factor. It's kind of a big decision whether, you know, should I remove my shorts, which have generated me all the past following this past year at the hopes of, at the hopes of generating further interest in my long form content. I didn't know. It wasn't until I saw this video by Ludwig in my home screen that I really knew what I needed to do. In this, he made a brand new channel and got it to blow up fast really fast. Now, I had actually seen this video quite a bit prior. It was a sign that showed that actual good content can make a channel with zero subscribers grow relatively quickly. Now, I'll be honest, the level of production in these videos are nowhere near professional, especially when comparing it to these YouTubers that have such massive followings. What you gotta realize with content creation is what you're doing is fighting for every second of the viewer's time. There's just a natural temptation for people to click off the video the second it gets uninteresting. This makes it necessary for you to round out some of the more, you know, nuanced aspects of professional grade content. Things such as, you know, like adding music to your video, creating a library of assets for you to use in future videos to create a consistent brand, and actually creating thumbnails that aren't, you know, just a PNG of your art. Now at the time of these recordings, you know, pretty much none of these are featured in my videos. <laughs> and I'll, I'll, I'll be working on that the next coming weeks. But all of this is in an effort to grow an engaged community. Not an easy thing to do. I'm sure if any of you have tried making an art account, you know that between creating the pieces themselves, as well as actually producing all the stuff required for content creation, it takes a long time. And the rewards for putting in that amount of effort are not really worth it, especially at first. I'm gonna use an extreme example. This is gonna be my Instagram. Now originally, I started this Instagram before any of my other social medias. I wasn't planning on making videos. I wasn't, pl <laughs> I wasn't planning on making TikToks, especially, you know, even though that's my largest following now. So because this Instagram account was literally only for fun, um, I decided to do a little bit of trolling on this account. I just wanted to see the followers increase. I wasn't particularly interested in, you know, using this account for business purposes. So I immediately set a goal of hitting 1,000 followers. How do you hit 1,000 followers the fastest? Well, you know those random IG accounts that follow you and never like, comment on your posts? The reason they're doing this is because a certain percent of people they follow will follow them back. And because social media growth is really a compounding thing, especially in the beginning, it's super hard to get even a base of audience. This is probably most apparent on YouTube where, you know, it's a super struggle to get established. But once you're established, it's pretty, I wouldn't say it's easy easy to grow, but it's a lot easier. Let me give you an example for if a social media pulls a 5% increase in followers every post, starting off with, you know, let's say 100 subscribers originally, because the first 100, you're just going to get those. It's not like, it's not like, especially in the beginning, you're not going to get any followers from your post. Now, assuming that you have 100 followers, if you pull a 5% growth every day, you'll end up with roughly 430 followers after a month of uploading every day. And there's a couple flaws in its calculus, that being, you know, consistent compounding growth. You know, as it actually turns out, you could pull 200 the first month from zero pretty easily without worrying about, you know, compounding growth. You'll just get those if you're posting decent quality content. And another issue with this calculus is it assumes all your posts are equal. You know, it assumes that some of them aren't going to underperform and some of them aren't going to overperform. But this just represents an average. Maybe it's a little too high because the expected number of followers after a year is half a million, and that is an extremely rare target to hit. However, the reason I bring this up is it shows why it's so hard to start a social media, especially in the beginning. You know, I wouldn't call 400 subscribers after a month of consistently posting decent quality content a fair return. 
Though obviously, because I particularly didn't care about, you know, factors such as building a community, I was just posting it out there for fun, and I was just trying to farm growth. You know, I, I did this follow and follow method until roughly, you know, 2k. And when I tell you the page was not performing well, it was dead. Zero posts would above its following. Almost zero gross since the beginning of the year. With almost a completely dead comment section. With no possibility of salvage, there was one thing left to do. Delete the page. Maybe it's a controversial strategy, but as for now, there is no JDC art Instagram page. This is a fairly large risk just dumping 2k followers, especially with the following I have right now. But you know, it's a risk I have to take. And the moral of the story is that there's no shortcut to growing a following. You just gotta work on getting better every upload and trying to keep your following engaged. Remember, especially in the beginning, low numbers are expected. It's just the nature of making content. Don't get discouraged, just remember, that's just how it goes. Now if you guys want to give me some copium, you could like and subscribe the video, but only if you actually want to see this content. And go ahead and watch my last video. Hopefully, you'll see a difference in quality. <laughs>